What's up, K family? Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, guys, we are going to be checking the compression ratio of this motor. We're actually going to turn it over, see if it turns over. Then if it does, we're good to go. We're going to check that compression and see the rating of the motor. Is it a healthy motor? Is there something significantly wrong with it? So go ahead, guys. If you are new, this is a motor we just picked up for a very good price, and we're going to be dissecting it to learn on it. So if you are interested, go ahead subscribe and keep watching all right lads so the first thing we're gonna do and i kind of already went ahead and did this earlier but there is plug wire right over here that we have to pull out from each cylinder that's attached to a spark plug and then we're gonna pull out each spark plug from each cylinder we're gonna check out the spark plugs to see if there's anything going on and fishy on the spark plug itself once we take the spark plugs out, it'll be much easier to turn the crankshaft of the motor. And if the crankshaft turns, that means the pistons inside the cylinder bores are working good. They are able to move up and down. That means that the motor is not seized. That means that the bearings are probably still in okay shape and other things like that. That's a positive thing. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. Once we take everything out, we went ahead and picked up a compression tester from the local hardware store. This tester attaches to each spark plug hole and we're gonna try to turn the crankshaft over first by hand and see if we can get a compression reading by turning an engine over by hand. Then we are gonna be using a gun that actually Bullets Garage was kind enough to borrow for this video, a Milwaukee. Hopefully, if I can't turn it by hand and get a reading, I'm gonna to try to use this. And I guess this is an impact. It's not a drill, that's for sure. Yeah, it's an impact. We're gonna to try to impact this. I've only seen one guy check compression on the internet by hand and he got a decent reading, but then again, his car or his engine was on an engine stand. It's much easier, he had much more leverage. And then if I can't do it by that, I'm gonna use the drill. And again, I don't think I've seen it on the web somebody using an impact in a drill to turn the motor over the ideal way to check the compression on a motor that's off a vehicle is to have a starter attached to the vehicle this starter is not the starter for this car i tried ghetto rigging it into this area here but it just won't work it's not the right idea it does not the right fit but ideally you would take some cables jump the starter the starter would turn the motor over and you can check the compression reading on that but again guys i had a 12 volt power supply right here this is an ac to dc converter power inverter here and i tried to power up the the starter here using that and it just did not have enough juice which is kind of frustrating because it says it does put out 13.8 direct current then i tried using this 16 volt racing battery that I've had here in the garage for a long time. And I know this is 16 volt, and this starter is a 12 volt. Everything on the automotive uh, chassis is pretty much 12 volt, but uh, this was only producing six volts right now. It's been in the garage, as you guys can see. That little eye right there is red, so it's not working. I even tried jumping it here and such, and none of this is working. So we're gonna have to use good old forearms, and we'll see about the Milwaukee drill, see? What happens, uh, hopefully it works, so I could be the first one to tell you on YouTube that you can use an impact to check the compression ratio if you have no starter attached to the vehicle. So let's go ahead, jump on it, take off the boots, take off the spark plugs, try to crank that motor over, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, we got the spark plug boots off and the spark plugs out. Cylinder one spark plug has a lot of just dirt and contamination on the spark plug itself, on the threads. Everything else looks okay. I mean, it's not ideal, but there's no oil on the spark plugs or anything like that. And let me just show you the cylinders here. And I'm gonna switch over to my phone right now so you guys can see much more detail. Okay, here's a better look at the spark plugs themselves. You see the, all the dirt on this one right here? 
AC Delco Sparks. Who knows? Maybe these were original. Still learning the number four. For the most part, nice and clean in here. You can actually see the piston down inside right there. You see it? Little, you can see a little peak of that piston straight down. Cylinder number three, again, fairly clean. You see the piston there. Cylinder two, clean. You see some of the shiny piston on the bottom. And cylinder one is the only one that I'm concerned about. You can see all this soot built up right over here. And it's pretty dirty. I'm not sure if this was originally an oil leak or if there was blow by. But this, but this spark plug was actually the loosest one. I don't think it was tightened properly. So I'm guessing maybe some blow by through that spark plug uh, mount up into the head over here. I don't know. Comment down below. I mean, I know the head is and the valve cover is not all that clean, but compared to these three. Cylinder one is the dirtiest, but the moment of truth guys. Let's go ahead to try to turn this motor over and let's see if she turns All right guys We're gonna put a socket onto this pulley bolt right here We're just gonna slightly turn that motor if this motor is in decent, okay Rebuildable working condition this pulley should turn right now. Let's see There we go. There we go. It turned over fairly easy. I actually got it on top that center right here right now aligned. But I'm going to go ahead and do another rotation and just take a look. Remember, the spark plugs are out, so that compression is not there, so it's easier for me to turn that motor. There is a slight tick when I'm going through the rotations on the head around cylinder one right by my ear. I don't think the the valves are touching the motor or the, the pistons, but uh, there is a little tick I'm hearing. So, so I'm just gonna leave this engine in top dead center. And by top dead center, there's actually a mark right here. And on the pulley, there's a little notch that's cut out. And that means the engine is on top that center. And what that means is cylinder one is pushed all the way up. And because cylinder one and four are pretty much identical, so that means one and four are up. And two and three cylinders are actually on the downstroke. To achieve a smooth engine, smooth running engine, you need it to be balanced. So by these two cylinders working opposite of these two cylinders, the engine is in perfect harmony, perfect balance. That goes for every engine. It doesn't go up for and down for because then you would have a lot of vibrations transferring over to the cabin. So right now I'm very pleased that this motor turns over. Now what we're going to do, we're going to get our compression tester. We're going to hook it up to each cylinder, try to crank it by hand. And for those of you guys that don't know what a compression tester is, a cylinder and an engine in a cylinder is meant to create pressure. And what this compression test is doing is checking the pressure of each cylinder. If an engine doesn't hold pressure, you are losing power potential. You are, you losing, you are losing efficiency. So by doing this test, we will see, we can gauge if the engine is efficient or if it has a deeper problem inside of it, such as broken valves, broken piston rings, broken head gasket and such. And this tells you a good idea here. Hold on, it was somewhere right here. It tells you the most common cause for low compression are valves that are not sealed properly, cylinder head gasket or cylinder head and piston rings that are worn out. So very easy to do. This is actually the first time I'm doing a compression test, so stick with me. But essentially, but essentially all you have to do is uh, thread in this end into the spark plug area, turn it by hand, and then crank that motor over. And then there's a relief valve. Once you build the pressure and you want to just uh, take this off, you just bleed the air system. But the interesting, the nice thing is it's going to hold air pressure until you bleed it. So let's go ahead and do that now. All 
All right, guys. We got everything hooked up. Hopefully, you guys can see this. I'm using my wrench, my ratchet, and we're gonna turn over this motor clockwise, as that's how I think everything should go. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna try to crank it. Okay. So right there, we're at 60 right now. We're gonna try to give it a few more turns and revolutions and see if we can crank it up a little bit more. Oh gosh, this is really hard. That's what I'm talking about. You just knock your fingers right into the motor. Ah. Anyway, guys, we got about 70 on the compression reading ratio. We got 70 on the compression. I'm gonna probably do it a few more times and then I'll get the gun to check the same cylinder, see what we can get with the gun. All right, guys, so we got 70 here. I'm gonna bleed the system out. And we're gonna use the Milwaukee right now. See what happens. Oh, bull, it won't even turn it. Ah, garbage. Garbage, man. We should take advantage of this Milwaukee on other bolts though. But dang, I thought this sucker would, would move it. I guess this is why people said it's not going to work. Don't do it. I guess they were right. Well, I guess we're going to have to finish off by hand, boys. I'm sorry. I wish there was an easier method here. I wish there was an easier method. But uh, yeah, we got to finish off doing this by hand. Again, by hand, it's not the most uh, accurate reading as you can only go so fast and pull as hard as you can the area you're working at but as long as we can build some compression and i guess as long as these cylinders are somewhat close to each other the numbers typically you want to see at least a hundred um psi in each cylinder like very minimum it can go up to 200 psi per cylinder but the most important thing is you want them to be consistent you know you don't want one being 30 psi and the other one being 150 psi because that can signal that there is a bad head gasket or there's some problems with the valves you can also do a leak down test which is similar to a compression test but for a leak down test we're forcing air into the cylinder and trying to see if it will hold or if it will escape we're not going to do a leak down test for this engine but uh, i do want to finish off taking the other readings from this motor so let's go ahead finish off the other three all right, we're just gonna double check cylinder one here. I got an extra pair of gloves because when you hit this motor with your pinky, man, you just wanna call off work. Yeah, so we just got pretty much the same reading, 65, 70 pounds on this one. I should write this down somewhere and carry on to the next one. Now, right now, guys, we are doing just a dry test, meaning the engine is as is. And you see all the dirt we're pulling up from the cylinder here? But like I'm saying, guys, right now we're doing just a dry test. You shouldn't do a dry test on a cold motor because those rings aren't sealed as well as a warm motor, which is interesting because I always thought to remove spark plugs or to change spark plugs, you got to work on a cold motor because you have a increased chance of stripping the threads in the head. So that's one thing that's kind of not as efficient and not as accurate as I thought it would be. And then the other thing is we're gonna do a wet compression test as well. And what a wet compression test is, we're gonna put some oil into the cylinders. So it coats the cylinder, it creates a better seal. And then we're gonna do a compression test again. And we're gonna be able to compare the readings before and after. Now, if we put oil into the cylinders and the compression ratio does increase significantly, well, what that means is, it means a few things. It means that the engine oil is helping seal the cylinders better, but it also can mean that the cylinder is bad, something in the cylinder is bad, and by putting oil in it, helping it artificially seal, 
it raises. We'll see. We'll see what the wet compression reading test says as well, but let's finish off the dry one first. We're not getting much here. All right, well, cylinder number two, we almost got 30. That's gonna do it. It's not going up anymore. All right, cylinder number three, gentlemen. We got about 50 pounds. Cylinder four, we got 30 pounds. And my forearms and my pinky are killing me right now. I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame Though it might be nice to own a jet plane I'ma do it all for you, come along